Joe Roark of the Bryan Law Center, our guest on part two of today's Local 6 Legal Line, answering your questions regarding criminal defense and criminal related uh, issues at one 208 We have a, a question from Emily who says, my son is in prison and he's using their phone to make calls to me and his attorney. I'm not sure how confidential this is. Do you think they could be recording his calls? Is that a good idea? Uh, no, it's not a great idea. It's especially a bad idea to the calls with you, a family member, or any other non-attorney. There is no expectation of privacy at all uh, on a jail line call uh, to someone who is not an attorney. So you certainly should never, ever discuss any sensitive information, any confidential information, anything related to your case, honestly on a phone call, uh, except with your attorney. And even then, the phone call with your attorney is supposed to be secure uh, and not recorded, and, and jails obviously attempt to comply with that. But just be careful, because you're having a conversation that may be overheard. And if it is in the presence of anybody else, uh, you've got some questions and some challenges related to even an attorney-client privilege. So to the extent that it's possible, I wouldn't discuss anything sensitive on a jail phone uh, under any circumstances, or at a minimum, never ever do it, uh, unless you're speaking to your attorney. We have a question from Riley who says, I had a summons to appear in court, but I was in the hospital at the time and I missed my court date. I've got friends that tell me I'll likely be arrested for missing that. What should I do at this point? Uh, well, your friends, uh, guest friends are kind of two for two today. Uh, you could actually get in some level of trouble because you received a summons, you had to appear. If you can pro provide proof to the court that you were in fact in the hospital, then usually the, the courts will give you a break and not, not get you in too much trouble, especially if it was just a summons. Uh, but you certainly would need to, uh, you certainly would need to uh, provide proof that that was the case. You can't just say so. I mean, you need to have some sort of uh, intake paperwork and it needs to be something more than just like a routine or regular doctor's appointment and you need to be in the hospital. Um, otherwise, you need to be in court. You should always appear for your court appearances uh, if you get a summons or, or if it's just upcoming court date. A little bit more than 90 seconds left in this segment and a question from a viewer who says, if you're stopped by a police officer and they want to search your car and you refuse, what can you look forward to? Okay. Well, uh, a police officer cannot search a car in the absence of a warrant unless there are some exigent circumstances uh, and uh, cars not not completely wide open, but there are more exceptions available for the search of a car than say like a search of your home just because it's a moving vehicle and you could drive it off and dispose of the uh, dispose of any evidence of criminal conduct if they had to stop and get a warrant for everything that they need to do to search your car. Now, you never have to consent to the search of your car, um, but if you refuse uh, that search, the officer still may be able to uh, conduct a search based on uh, either evidence of a crime being in plain sight, um, some reasonable belief about the safety of the officer, um, some reasonable belief that it was just using the commission of a crime. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of things that would allow an officer to search your car, uh, but it's not universal and it's not completely open. So if you do not wish for an officer to search your car, you don't have to agree to it. Does not mean it's going to happen, but, um, but you've got a, a constitutional right to say no. Got about 30 seconds left, and I'm going to squeeze one more in here real quickly. We've got sure. someone who says they live next door to a business. That business has a guard dog, stays chained up all night, but it barks all night. Animal, animal Control says they can't do anything. What can they do about it? Uh, probably the best that you could get on that one would be like a nuisance claim, um, just for the noise that it makes, just the same way if someone was you know, running a chainsaw violating noise ordinances. But that's probably about it. Um, and it would have to be pretty loud to, to reach that. But that's, that's probably about the best you can get on that. Joe Roark, our guest on part two, previously visited with uh, Kevin Shannon on part one of today's Local 6 Legal Lines. If you would like to review either one of these segments, give us just a little bit of time. We'll mix them down, pop them up on our website, look for the Legal Line icon and Bryant Law Center online at WPSDLocal6.com. More midday coming up.